Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the Q of A Queen of Audio Gimlet. So here's what it looks like up close. And, uh, you know, what's actually special about the shell isn't so much what it looks like or the nice brass inset with the logo plate that they did and the little two pin recessed uh, connector, brass nozzle, turbine style uh, nozzle cover. You know, all those are uh, are fancy and nice looking, but what's actually special about the shell is the weight of it and the solid feel to it. This is a kind of an enamel covered metal. I'm not sure what kind of metal it is, but it has a uh, quite a heft to it. It feels very solid, and I, I would be a little careful about dropping it onto a hard surface as the enamel is probably going to take a nick or two if you drop it too far. So, but as far as what a typical budget set feels like, yeah, this one is sort of a next level build on solid and and how much it weighs and and perhaps that's a negative as well because it does weigh a little bit and for those of you who are sensitive to things hanging in your ears it does weigh a little bit cable is a kind of a nice version of a two twisted four core uh, nice gold hardware you also get this uh, case which says q of a on top of it you get two packs of tips which are uh, kind of reasonably close in bore size. So this is the white version. This is the blue version, which I use. So nice set, uh, two pairs of tips. This is the box. It says Gimlet, 10 millimeter LCP, dynamic driver. And you get a frequency response graph, which we'll get to later on the back of the box. So there we go. So we'll kind of jump into it and we'll go through this one quickly. And uh, I did want to sort of reached out and wanted to review this one, even though it came out about three months ago. And I think it should have been reviewed more about three months ago before we got into that whole one dynamic driver, Harman style craze that started out with all the tin hi-fi sets. This one came out, I think, a little bit before that. And it kind of got lost in the shuffle of so many sets in so little time. So... I do wish that this one was talked about a little bit more three months ago, but uh, you know I do have a chance to talk about it now. And and really, it came down to number one: uh, why doesn't this one say "Hi Fry" on the box? Right? Those of you who are on Facebook audio groups, you're probably familiar with Hi Fry. He is the one who actually tuned the set for Queen of Audio. So I do wish that uh, more people had reviewed it simply because of that reason. You know, we should be very much supportive of companies, Queen of Audio or Canera, who reach out to community members like Hi Fry, Jeff, however you know him. But, uh, you know, that is a very special thing to be able to work with a company like Canera and put a tuning out in a product and deliver it. And, you know, it's really cool. So, you know, I think if for me, I'm just kind of an idiot on video and it's always is easier for me to criticize than to create something. So very much props and thanks to Jeff for putting in a lot of hard work to put out a set. And regardless of what I say, it's sort of a special privilege to hear a set that he tuned that was put out, you know, by a company like Canera and Queen of Audio. So kind of thanks to both of those companies for, um, again, committing to working with the community to put out products like this. So second, and, and this is probably the most important bit on the whole page and why there's been some varied reviews on this set. Lots of people like it a lot. Some people didn't like it as much. I'm probably in a latter set. I, I think the difference here, his different take on, on Harman tuning or on a popular tuning um, is just a little bit too sensitive for me on certain track to certain tracks than other sets. I think there's a reason why those Harman sets are actually very popular because they work across genres very, very well. They cover lots and lots of playlists and it, it sounds very consistent across them. And perhaps you get annoyed because so many sets sound familiar, sound so similar to each other. But on the other hand, they, they sound you know similar in a good way. And I think there's just a bonus to having that style. But uh, Gimlet takes kind of a, uh, a different turn, a different twist on it, and we'll take let's take a quick look at the graph uh, up close. So we'll start here, sub bass. So Moondrop Aria, kind of this very popular style tuning that really almost began with Aria, but probably not quite. But so it actually left the sub bass uh, a little bit lifted, a little bit boosted, and it has this almost 40, 45 degree uh, mid bass, sub bass, mid bass 
you know, a nice ratio between the two. So Gimlet rolls off the sub bass a little bit, so you end up with this punchier, tighter, faster, mid bassier version of bass. So it's not quite the same as Aria. Kind of carries a little more um, of the V shape into the mids. And then it lifts the upper mids just a little bit over where Ari is to really compensate for this. So boost this a little bit, boost this a little bit. This keeps your vocals a bit clearer. And the uh, actual, the upper treble is actually a little bit little safer and it doesn't quite come across on the graph as much, but we'll talk about it in a second. So I think these specific areas and how they land on your tracks is really the difference between um, enjoying Gimlet and thinking that it's you know not quite for you. And for me, it's kind of a mixed bag of, of where it landed on certain tracks. I think it, it does work good and quite well on some, but not as much as on other ones. So I call this the Gimlet triage, and it's how I think of the pros and cons on each one of those changes. And I think starting out with the mid-bass bump, either you really like that much, and if we go back and, and look at that real quickly... So when you look at about 200, you know, that's probably two or three decibels over Aria. Some people said Aria had enough mid-bass already, so to really bump it up to that's probably about the 5 dB level, I do think that is a noticeable bump there, and that's going to appeal to some people. Some people like that, uh, you know, dirtier, heavier style mid-bass. Other people are just going to say it clouds the clarity and the air and the detail. It's, it's a big masking agent if you're really sensitive to you know, two or three decibels in mid-bass, you'll sort of notice it um, really being a little bit more persistent right in your mids. And, you know, you can say the mids are a little bit recessed, but you also get this little bit of mid-bass bleeding through and it tends to affect the clarity. And then in the upper treble where the level is just a little bit low or a bit too safe, again, it kind of masks that air that you would typically hear with lower mid-bass levels. And the detail in the mids, the same thing. Just a little bit more persistent mid-bass tends to mask out uh, detail right in your mids. So that upper mid bump, you know, so again, this whole area from about 2 to 4K just lifted right above where Aria is. Again, some people said Aria was a bit little, I don't know, a little bit sharp right there. So I think Gimlet goes a little bit sharper. And again, either you prefer these more forward, close-in vocals that works for you, or for me, it kind of throws off the balance in the stage. It becomes a little bit too close. It takes up too much emphasis, and it tends to, again, mask other things like the upper treble. So I sort of understand why that was done, just to get over the mid-bass bit, but um, for me, it just takes it off uh, natural just a little bit. And then the treble, like I said, it's it's quite safe, and it can sound dark against that mid-bass and the upper mid. So you're sort of expecting a little bump out there, and there isn't one. So when you hear kind of a, a bumpier, a punchier mid-bass, and then a kind of strong forward lower mid or upper mid, you know, you're sort of waiting to hear those treble, mid-treble, upper trebles really rise and soar a little bit. And they actually don't. It's just a very safe version of treble. So, yeah, I think... Um, on one dynamic drivers, I think that the treble is sort of a make or break. I think um, sets that tend to be more consistent tend to do a little bit better. And I think this one is just going to work for certain playlists. And some people will never even notice it. Some people will notice it uh, right off the bat. So the not as good. And again, I think this goes back to this little change uh, from Aria. I think sometimes changing that recipe, I think a lot of sets followed Aria's recipe. Sometimes when you change it a little bit, it's just not quite as good as just following the recipe. And depending on how your tracks land on Gimlet, I think that is that is true in a bit. I think for me, the stage and the imaging detract from the experience if you A-B with Aria. So, you know, small change really kind of ripples through the whole sound and the whole experience. And I think that's sort of where I got lost on, on Gimlet compared to something like Aria. So the sound... And it's UV, depending on your music. Again, it's this this mid bass bit. The more mid bass you have in your tracks, the more it sounds V shaped. If you don't have any real mid bass in your in your um, track, it tends to sound very U shaped because this is rolled off a little bit, so you don't have that sub bass rumble. It doesn't go really deep. You don't have any any part of your track here, so this whole thing sounds very U shaped. 
So I very much understand why people are saying it's U-shaped, but from the graph, it's it's probably closer to a, a V-shape. So the base, again, this LCP driver, um, quite nice. In isolation, you know, I think the base actually sounds pretty good, especially with that rolled off sub bass. I think some people will are attracted to that because it always sounds a little punchier, a little faster. Um, you know, it's just a, a thing that happens when you roll it off. It's That is a, a sound that people like. But the upper mid is bumped to really right on top of it. So you really have to have a track that has enough mid bass to really have that upper mid compensation so it all sounds in balance. If one of those two things is off, you end up with either a lot of mid bass or a lot of upper mid, and the upper mid tends to take the vocals away. So yeah, you gotta be, like I said, this thing is super sensitive to track. So yeah, you, get, you can sort of end up with brighter mids over a slightly thick mid bass is how I would call it. Sounds crisper and cleaner with that sub bass roll off. Like I said, I think that does work. And I think that is good and but it can sound a little punchier a little lighter in weight and a kind of a lack of uh, depth to it but again i think people like that sound so it's kind of a nitpick bit less mid bass in the track will sound a little more u-shaped like i said less warmth into the mids and lincoln parks leave out the rest i think that was a track that sort of weaves in and out of the uv shape it can, can sound uh, quite lean like a very a very u-shaped set and then as you hear more mid bass it sounds a little more v-shaped but it's kind of interesting to hear that chat that track move in and out of the uv shape so the mids again this is very very subjective and just my opinion on on what it sounds like with my playlist and my tracks and like i said it's going to depend on on how it really covers the mid bass and the upper mid the resolution the lcp is it's okay and i think you do it does get a little help from that 2 to 4k bump i think that does its job but bringing those mids forward is really a trade-off for people who just prefer forward vocals i think it does that against the mid bass and you end up with clear vocals and i think that's kind of a win right there i think certain people will just stop there and say great i love forward vocals that's what i want sounds uh, perfect to me for me it kind of goes a little slightly brighter if you're familiar with jeff's tuning styles and what he prefers being slightly brighter is is no big surprise but for me it's, it's slightly brighter upper mid and it sounds a little less less natural on voices especially if you're used to those husky chesty vocals the whole thing sounds a bit compressed and loses that separation needed over the mid bass and smaller stage because it's you sort of bumping up the vocals slightly brighter and you lose the back end, the lower bit of them. So you're only really hearing part of the range and everything gets shifted into that part of the range and the whole thing just sounds a little bit more compressed than having a full range that has this lower bit. And, and you sort of notice it more on those, even those male vocals that go deeper. Um, that part is sort of smoothed over and really missing and the whole thing is, is shifted up. And it's just a style that, it it's not it's not in particular to Gimlet. It happens on quite a few sets, and it, and it tends to happen very often when you bump this above 10 dB. When you hit that 11, 12, 13 uh, dB in the pin again area, you're pretty much going to end up with this style sound. This part tends to dominate, and it becomes very difficult to hear this bit, and it becomes difficult to hear that bit as well. So that's kind of what happens here on Gimlet as well. So treble nice smooth treble tracks with lower treble sound energetic like i said that part that two to four is actually bumped up uh, a couple db which is kind of nice um but you know into that mid upper treble i think it does lose a little bit of energy and it never really rises or soars it's it's basically inconsistent it's a really big nitpick i know but i think there are certain tracks that people have played that they're expecting the treble to have more presence and to be a little higher to really match the lower treble. And it it tends to not. It's just a quite safe tuning in that bit. But what I would also say is uh, that whole bit, that lack of height in the stage is just one indication that it was probably just a little bit too safe. That level um, doesn't really work, especially in the upper treble, whether it's masked by the mid bass or the lower treble or you know whatever is really happening. I do think the lack, the lack of height in the stage probably points to something going on there. And like I said, the stage, 
mostly between the ears, which uh, really kind of negatively in impacts the clarity and separation and imaging. And like I've talked about this quite a few times, this whole concept of soundstage can be a multiplier. It can make things sound better, makes cheaper sets sound better. But when it goes wrong and the whole sound becomes in your head and things become um, kind of overly layered and on top of each other and hard to differentiate, and now the mids are a little bit more compressed because of that little bump in two to four, yeah, I think the imaging really hurts when it gets slightly busy. And again, I think rethinking the upper treble and the size of the stage and just creating a little more space would have turned this into a negative impact, into a positive impact, and it probably would have done, we probably would have been talking about it more three months later than uh, we are now, but it is what it is, but not much height, which is really noticeable if you AB with REF. So again, I think changing this recipe just a little bit i think affected some things that i am more sensitive to and if you and i'm kind of an aria fan as well so just a being with aria i think there are some things that you can change on aria but the stage size was was probably not one of them that you wanted to change so that's what i got on gimlet so again thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you next time